The all new Blackstone pizza oven is here and it is gorgeous. We've been having so much fun playing with this. Today we are hanging out making some margarita pizzas and we're sneaking in a sweet childhood treat that my mom used to make with the leftover pizza dough. You guys aren't gonna wanna miss it, so let's hang out and play with some dough. If you haven't seen the new Blackstone pizza oven yet, be sure to check it out on blackstoneproducts.com. This redesigned pizza oven is gorgeous. Today we're hanging out and we're gonna play with some dough and make some margarita pizzas and a little sweet treat to hang out to the end so that you guys can make all of this at home. When it comes to a good pizza at home, you can make this taste better than any kind of takeout pizza with some good quality ingredients. I love using a good extra virgin olive oil. San Marzano tomatoes are a must for me for a margarita pizza, fresh basil and fresh garlic, some oregano, sea salt, and I love crushed red pepper with my pizza. Now when it comes to cheese for not just pizza but any recipe, hand shredded cheese is a must for me. Galbani is one of my favorites that I show you guys all the time. Hand shred this and it will melt up perfectly whenever making pizzas or any other recipes that call for mozzarella cheese. For a margarita pizza, I love using fresh mozzarella. Bogoisio makes a fantastic brand of pre-sliced fresh mozzarella, so today we'll be using that. Now when it comes to dough, I've showed you guys a few of my favorite dough recipes for Detroit pizzas or deep dish pizzas. We've got the grandma pizzas. We've used one of my favorites, the Lalo's pizza kits. And don't forget, there's also dough recipes on blackstoneproducts.com that you guys can try at home. Today, we're taking a shortcut, one of my favorites, and using some fresh pizza dough from a local pizza shop. I love tasting and testing out different pizza shop dough. They're so inexpensive, only a dollar or two or three for some dough balls. And finding your favorites, since they all do taste different, is always so much fun. I picked up three large pizza doughs. Now I will be trimming these down to make smaller pizzas because I want those scraps for the end of this video because after pizza it's always a must to fry up some pizza dough into a sweet treat. First things first, let's get our sauce ready. This is an uncooked pizza sauce for our margarita pizza. I've also showed you how I do a griddled pizza so you can make this same pizza. You can go back and watch my pizza video where I went down to Florida and taught CJ how I make a griddled pizza. And for that, I like to cook my pizza sauce since it won't be in an oven. Into a bowl goes our San Marzano tomatoes. I don't drain them off. However, if you'd like to, go right ahead. The most important thing for me is hand crushing them, using your hands, and making sure that they are San Marzano. So that will season it up with some oregano, some sea salt, a fresh garlic clove, grate it very finely in this. Now for a few basil leaves, we're just gonna hand tear these and drop them in a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil, give this a mix, and then you can give this a taste. Some people may wanna add sugar to theirs just to cut the acidity, or if you like a sweeter sauce. Now let's get our pizza oven preheating. We're gonna turn this on to high and let that oven come up to temperature while we get our pizzas ready to sling into here. Since we're using our fresh mozzarella, our Belgosio fresh mozzarella, it will have a lot of moisture in it, so I always let this blot on some paper towels, get as much liquid off and out of this cheese as I can. Set up our pizza station with my pizza mat. I love having this for the simple fact that it has those measurements on it, so I know how big of a pie I wanna make. We'll dust this with some flour so our pizza doesn't stick. I'm gonna also dust it with a little bit of semolina flour. The mixture of the two is what I really like working with when it comes to pizza. Down goes our dough ball. I've trimmed a little bit around the edge off, about a nice inch or inch and a half, only because for some reason the pizza shop that I went to today only had large balls, which sounds like to joke. Down goes our dough ball that I've trimmed off about an inch or two of. I want it to make medium to small pizzas, about 12 inch to 14 inch pies. And of course, never waste that dough. Put it aside, when working with dough from a local pizza shop, you never know how airy it's going to be, so you don't know how many bubbles you're going to create in your pizza oven. Either get one of those special pizza roller tools or just use a fork and pierce your dough slightly all around the bottom. This will prevent you getting those big air bubbles when it starts to cook. 
I'll drizzle some extra virgin olive oil over our pizza dough. This is gonna really add flavor and also help our dough cook. As we all are making pizzas together, we are all learning together. Next up, we'll add our San Marzano hand crushed tomatoes, allowing some of that basil we infuse them with to get in on that pizza. Use either a fork or a slotted spoon so that you don't get all of that extra tomato juice. And again, you can drain them off and do that in the beginning to make this part easier. But for me, it's just one extra step that I don't have to do. I can just use a fork to make sure I don't get any of that juice on my pizza. Now for our fresh mozzarella, I'm just ripping this by hand and placing it all around, a little here, a little there, trying to avoid the very center of our pizza though because we don't want any kind of puddle in the center. Over the top with some fresh basil leaves. Now we've got to get this up onto our pizza peel, so I'll sprinkle it with a little bit of our semolina. You can use semolina or mix it with flour or use all flour, use anything that you want. Once you've got this up on your pizza peel, give it a little extra stretch and then a little shimmy shake to ensure that nothing is sticking so that you have a successful smooth and easy launch right into our pizza oven. My pizza oven is reading directly in the center of the temperature gauge, which is exactly where I want this to be. Our pizza ended up launching right in the center where I like it on our pizza stone. If you wanted to check for the exact temperature, you're not gonna get it, but you can use the Blackstone Instant Read Thermometer. You're gonna get a different temperature depending on where you point it, whether it's the pizza, your pizza stone, directly in the back of the pizza oven. But with a little bit of play and testing, you'll figure out exactly where you like that temperature gauge to be at or around. That really works perfect for you at home. I'm gonna sneak in there before this is done, hoping that I have enough time to take some of my pictures for, of course, my social media, because why wouldn't you post these beautiful pictures if you are making this at home? When you do make this at home, be sure you also post a picture and tag Blackstone products so that we can see. Now within two minutes, this is done. I've got that nice char that I like on my pizza. You guys know I love my pizza well done, especially if it's a margarita. It has to have those charred bubbles for me. We'll go in with one more pizza that we made exactly the same way. Grab my camera for some pictures because each pie deserves its own little photo shoot. Two minutes again and it's done and we're pulling this out. Both of these smell so good. I'm happy with the way this crust came out. I can really smell the basil and the garlic in there. These tomatoes, I cannot wait to taste this. I've got to say so far I am really impressed with our new design of the Blackstone Pizza Oven. Now it's time to dive in because I've got family lurking over my shoulder waiting for a slice. So down with some fresh basil right before I cut into this. I always go over the top with some grated red pepper flakes because I love that just little kick of heat. We've got our Blackstone pizza cutter. Let's slice this up and let everyone in for a slice. These two pizzas literally disappeared in seconds. And now for my favorite part, which is a absolute must with leftover pizza dough. So always, always make sure that you have extra to make some fried dough with. You can do this right on your Blackstone griddle surface or on your side burner. You just need a shallow pot or pan, some paper towels lined on either a cooling rack or a plate, some white sugar, and any kind of oil that you like to fry your sweet treats in. Once our oil is heated between 325 and 350, we can start making our dough. This takes literally seconds to make and is expected every single time I make pizza. Just take your pizza dough, tear it into whatever size pieces you want. You can either do them in more of a log or stick form, or you can stretch it out and make it a little bit more like elephant ears. Just gently drop them into your hot oil. Once they are golden brown in about a minute or two on one side, give them a gentle flip to cook on the opposite side. They will expand and bubble up and just become so delicious. Once cooked on both sides, pull them out and immediately hit them with a healthy sprinkle of white sugar. You can also switch this up and add cinnamon if you like or use the Blackstone snickerdoodle even. For me, my mom always did it with just white sugar and a little bit of dough 
really stretched out to a lot of fried dough to feed the gigantic family that we have. I always remember waiting at the stove for the fried dough to be done, wanting to help do the sugar. It's just such a sweet and expensive treat to feed the kids. I swear my kids can smell this from a mile away if I'm trying to cook some up as a surprise for them. The only bad part about this fried dough is that I have to kind of yell at my kids to stop eating so much of it because it's so good. So we'll leave the leftovers in a container or in a storage bag and it's even good the next day leftover. That really reminds me of growing up. I can taste it. Mmm. Mm. It's so good. Yeah. Brings me back to my childhood. Makes me back to mine too. <laughs> You're in yours. Mm -hmm. I know you guys are gonna love this one, so be sure to try both of these recipes and let me know what you guys think down below. I hope these become a part of your family, maybe a new tradition for your kids. Now go make some pizza and fry dough and have fun doing so. Until next time, I'm Blackstone Betty and I will see you guys in the next video.